and welcome to Natural World Facts. I'm Leo and today I'll be telling you about symbiosis. Okay, so first of all, what is symbiosis? Symbiosis is where two species coexist and at least one of them derives benefit from the other. The name for an animal with a symbiotic relationship is a symbiont, and two animals of the same species can have a symbiotic relationship. There are multiple different versions of symbiotic relationships in which the partners are benefited in different ways. However, sometimes only one of the partners benefits. An example of this is parasitism, in which the parasite gets nourishment from its host, usually without killing it. Parasites are never beneficial to their host, and unlike in mutualism, the host gets nothing in return for the parasite feeding off it. Parasitism can be portrayed by a cow and a tick. The tick feeds off the cow's blood for nourishment and food, and the cow in return is more vulnerable to diseases and infection. Only the tick benefits in this parasitic relationship, and is also obligate. An obligate relationship means that either one or both of the partners relies on the other one for food and nourishment. In this case, the tick cannot live without the cow. In addition to mutualism and parasitism, there is another type of symbiosis called commensalism. Similar to parasitism, in a commensalism relationship, only one of the partners benefits. However, it does so without causing any harm to the host. Another example is between barnacles and whales. Barnacles rely on the current to bring food past them to eat, and some have attached themselves to large sea life such as whales in order to get a better position for feeding. This symbiotic relationship is an example of commensalism, as the whale neither benefits nor is harmed by the barnacles. When both partners are benefited from the relationship, it's known as mutualism. They rely on each other for either food or protection in return for something else. Clownfish are quite a common example. They benefit from an anemone by living inside it and being protected from predators who would find themselves stung if they came too close. In return, the anemone benefit from the clownfish, who increase the oxygen flow by wiggling in and out of the tentacles. This is an example of a mutualism relationship, as the two partners rely on each other. Another example of a mutualistic relationship is between an oxpecker and a zebra. Oxpeckers land on zebras and eat ticks or other parasites that live in their skin. The oxpecker gets food, and the zebra in return gets pest control. Also, when they're in danger, the oxpecker will fly upwards and scream a warning. This will alert the zebra that it's in danger. Mutualism is different to the other two types of symbiosis, because in this relationship, both the creatures benefit. This means that there's no host, and both the creatures will be equal. However, one will tend to be more dominant. Most species of mutualism are facultative, meaning that the two partners can live apart successfully. Whereas some relationships of mutualism are so close that the two interactive organisms can't live without each other. A symbiotic relationship where the two partners will be unable to continue living if separated is called an obligate relationship. In commensalism or parasitism, it is usually an obligate relationship for the parasite as it depends on the host for all of its needs. At the same time, the host is in a facultative relationship because it does not need the parasite and would do better off without it. One example of commensalism is inquilinism, in which the commensal species uses the host's nest or habitat without inconveniencing it. Let's say there's a bird nesting in a tree in a garden. Suppose you benefit from the bird by enjoying its song or its colours. This relationship could be an example of mutualism, as the bird benefits from you by using your garden or your habitat as a place of shelter. The bird example is also a case of inquilinism, as it is using your garden non-intrusively and is not inconveniencing you. However, if the bird had been flying into your house and stealing all your food, or leaving their bird droppings all over the carpet, it would have been very similar to parasitism, as the bird would be taking advantage of you by stealing all your food, and inconveniencing you by bleaching your carpet white with feces. Thank you for watching Natural World Facts. See you next time.